Hi, this is Mike WA3TTS. So we're going to take a look at a uh, 3.2 to 3.5 uh, megahertz pre-selector. It's got high Q stages. It is uh, built, actually scaled from the W1VD 500 kilohertz pre-selector. And what I did is I took each uh, component L and C and converted those over to a reactance value, and then went over to the uh, 1 over 2 pi FC and the 2 pi FL uh, equations and generated new uh, L and C numbers for the frequency range. And interesting unit, it's very high Q. It's a bit of a bear to tune. And I was able to do it with this MFJ. Uh, what I do is end up using either a 1 or a 3 dB pad coming out of the out of the generator. And what this does is it reduces the sensitivity, the interaction between the, uh, the MFJ unit and this pre-selector here. So let me set the camera aside for a second or two. We'll hook this up. Alright, have it hooked up there. I'm going to hook the uh, other end of the pre-selector up through a 20 dB pad over to my spectrum analyzer and uh, we're just using this as as a relative level indicator okay so if we take this down to the middle line like there and then bypass the uh, pre-selector we'll get an insertion loss number and the insertion loss on this is you might think it's a little high but trying to get really narrow bandwidths and I have more um, IF gain than I need so it's really not that much of a problem as far as my LF converter goes. Somewhere around here I had, oh let's just do it this way, here, take this off and we'll go straight into this guy. It hasn't fallen asleep yet, and I'm still at 3.218 megahertz. Okay, so it came up, and I'm like uh, 12 dB higher right now. All right, I'm gonna put that back in. Maybe that two to one standing way right now. Yeah, of course we have a two to one because I had the three D pad in one. It'll it won't look the same. And do it this way. Okay, so right now I have a generator around 250 kilohertz. And I got like 1.2 here. Can I read that or not? And um, if I swap these around, part of the trick of doing this is reversing ports to make sure you got 50 ohms both ways. And I got 1.6 right there. And I might have bumped it along the way. There's 1.3. So it's in there close enough. Anyway, I could take this all the way up to 3.475. It's 3.47. 3.48. It, it turns pretty good down here. You can see that. The needle go up and down. With me tuning the, the thing. And I get the reciprocal half decent as well. 
uh, change ports. You can see it's still pretty close. There it goes. So anyway, it'll it'll tune from three five just about. That's two to one. Yeah, that's two to one at three five. And since I'm using a three megahertz LO on my LF converter, I have this thing optimized for four hundred seventy five kilohertz four hundred seventy five kilohertz reception. And that of course converts up to three to four seven five. But you can see it it dips out real nice there one to one. And then if I reverse these two, and here you can also see I don't have as much loss. Only about 6 dB of loss on this end. And so you really can't get these pre selectors to work everywhere. You're just trying to get them to work really well. Your key frequency and then, you know, kind of have some casual pre selection capability around your frequency of interest. Anyway, let's swap this again. See, I'm close there. Okay, now what I could do is um, will it go all the way down? Yeah, it went all the way down, just about all the way down there. Looking for the easiest way to tune this. Went back to sleep. Okay, this is the side coming in off of the converter, so I'm going to try and tweak this guy down. That's about as far as it wants to go. I might get a tweak there. But if you try and pull it too much one way before you swap it around and try the other side, you'll go beyond the limits of what you can tune. We'll, we'll reverse this now, these two sides, and see what happens the other direction. Hard to do this with a camera in your hand. It's kind of off the cuff. But anyway, it, it stayed together there. This is still a decent match on this end, so I got lucky. And you can see it dips out one to one there. And then about 6 dB of uh, insertion loss at 3.475 kilohertz. Let's take it down to 400. 400 is not that far away. And we'll retune. Um, there it is. The 1.0 at 3.4, and about the same 6 dB of loss. Now you watch how fast this drops off to get off tuning. You know the other side doesn't drop real fast, but the the low side drops. As I add more capacitance, going down in frequency, the low side drops like crazy. So we're back there. All right, let's go down to 3.3. And we'll retune again. See, it's not starting to like. Oh, there it goes. Okay. There's 1.0. Still about 6 dB of insertion loss. All right. Take it down to 3, 250. There's 250. Will I get it? Yeah, it still tunes. 1.1. .1. 
and point one, one point five. Point one's about the best I can get. And the loss is starting to get a little bit more at two fifty. It's like closer to seven there. Take it down to two twenty five. I could still get it to go pretty flat there. And we'll do a quick reverse one more time just to show you that this thing is tuned reasonably close on both directions. And if you don't use attenuator pads on your power indicating device and on your uh, generator when you do this, That's like 1.3 there. You know, you can go nuts trying to get it aligned, but the trick is to start with like the 6 or a 3 dB pad and do a tuning, reverse it, and then go back and try it again with a 3 dB pad, and you'll be a little bit closer, and you're trying to do iterations to bring it back into 50 ohms all the way around, and as long as you have a the 3 dB pad on either side of it, it's kind of seeing something like 50 ohms all the time, and that makes a huge difference in trying to get one of these things aligned correctly. If you don't have that reference point, it's, it just goes everywhere on you. But anyway, it does, it does tune about 300 kilohertz. Yeah, it's not going to go all the way down to the 200 on me. I'll try 210. 215. We'll do that. Yeah, it's close, but not, a, not all the way. So anyway, I get some, some tunable range out of that, and what I, I use that for is to do some casual non-directional beacon uh, DXing and still have some uh, pre-selection on the IF very close to some powerful AM stations and so I'm trying to get signal away from the top of the band using that and the other thing that I, I try to do this uh, big reason I do this is that I, I have a, a double balance mixer with a, a level 23 LO on it and when you have a quarter of a watt for your LO you really don't want to have a failure and dump a quarter watt into the front end of your receiver so uh, this little gadget here on top of you know, doing some uh, IF uh, pre-selector filtering also puts the uh, the LO down about 60 or 70 dB. If, it, if there was a failure, it wouldn't come screaming into the front end of my radio and, you know, cook the front end and whatever stage is down the line. So anyway, that's a quick overview of how the thing looks and plays. And uh, like I said, it's very similar to the W1VD pre-selector for 500 kilohertz, but I, I rescaled it for uh, 3 megahertz range. Anyway, maybe uh, share some uh, some information there. Uh, did learn a fair amount on uh, getting one of these things to play, uh, building it. You know, a lot of things you learn by building, and not so much by looking at them on paper. And this is certainly the case on this unit. 73 from WA3TTS. So good day.